Well, Austin Price, uh, VolQuest.com, covering Tennessee football, Tennessee football recruiting. Austin, thank you for the time as always. And on the football recruiting trail, Tennessee picked up a commitment a couple of days ago from wide receiver Radarius Jackson. Big news for Tennessee, getting one of the top in-state players from Memphis. What did you think of the news? What does it mean for Tennessee adding him to the 2025 class? Well, it was a huge get, huge get for George McIntyre, the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, you you want to try to keep the, the players you truly covet in the state in state. He's one of those for this class. And, you know, just again, uh, you know, a, a, a big to get him in before the calendar turns to May. What sold him on, on Tennessee? I know there's some talk about him waiting, but what sold him on Tennessee and making sure that he went on and, and, and you know did it now before his initial scheduled announcement? I think just the combination of the comfort level with the staff. Uh, you know, obviously George has been working on him for a while. Those two play on the same seven on seven team, Tennessee Select, and you know, I, I think just. He got up here, saw what he needed to see a few weeks ago, and, you know, was like, you know, there's no point to – he's a low-key kid, not a big rah-rah kid. And, you know, I think he was uh, very comfortable and, you know, going ahead and getting it done. What is the potential of Radarius Jackson as a college receiver? I, I, you know, I think his best football is ahead of him. I think he's still really raw. But, I mean, he's explosive. He's a big kid, long arms. Um, you know, a little less than just shy of 200 pounds. And he's only 16. He doesn't turn 17 until August, which means he won't turn 18 until, you know, he is in fall camp his freshman year. That's a lot like Darnell Wright was, you know, which means you're, you're, you know, a lot of kids are, you know, already 19 when they, you know, get to college, you know, or, you know, some kids are even older than that, depending on if they got held back. This kid's young. And, uh, you know, that, that sets up well for him because he will continue to mature both on and off the field. Austin Price, VolQuest.com, is with us. What is next for Tennessee on the recruiting trail in terms of uh, schedule, visits, being able to hit the road, prospects that maybe you're paying attention to? Well, you know, coaches are out and about right now. Um, you know, in the spring evaluation period, the, the new rule changes this year, they can only go see a kid once. So you can only go see – each kid one time. In the past, it was two times. And so you want to make it count. Uh, in some ways, you know, they, they try to go early, you know, to see the kid. That way you can say, you know, you know, you were, the, you were my number one guy or, you know, you're the first day out. I went to see you, you know, and, you know, make the kids feel good, love them up. And, uh, you know, the, the next big uh, recruiting weekend, uh, Zion Grady will be here this coming weekend, uh, you know, big-time D-lineman out of Alabama. But overall, it will be the Memorial Day 865 Live event and uh, Tennessee's had a pretty good hit rate of, well, when they've got those guys here for that unofficially and turned around and had them on an official a few weeks later, their chances of landing them has been pretty good. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see who they can get here for that event. And then, of course, they're set up for all those June officials. Uh, with some kids already kind of announcing when they will announce. Like Charles House will be a June, I think June 22nd or something like that, commitment date, a defensive lineman out of Charlotte. Uh, Jalen Matthews is June 3rd. Um, offensive tackle out of New Jersey. So, you know, you've got some pinpointed dates already on the calendar and then obviously a ton of official visits that month. Austin Price, VolQuest.com. Kyle Ford transferred from USC to UCLA back to USC and uh, simply said, my fault, I was tripping. Do you see a scenario where a player from Tennessee who transferred out, like, ever comes back? I mean, and there's some fans kind of talking about Tyler Barron. I don't see that, you know, being a possibility, unless you do. Uh, but do you, do you see in the future maybe a player transferring out but then being able to come back? There's a greater chance Josh Ward suits up for the Vols this fall than Tyler Barron. Um, you know, you never say never in this stuff. Um, you know, listen – Coaches, a lot of times, will be like, well, if, once you go in, you know, there's no coming back, right? Um, but, I mean, that o that only applies to, you know, if you're really loaded in a position. If you're, let's say, you're, you had a tight end leave, you're still thin at tight end, he wants to come back. Are you going to let pride get in the way or are you going to go, that guy could help us? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
I think it depends on the kind of you know each situation. But I don't you know I, I would lean no. But again, you never say never in any of this stuff. What what position do you see Josh Ward playing if he were to suit up for the balls this year? Um, uh, you know, I kind of see him in that Gerald Harrison role, you know, where he holds the cord. <laughs> Josh Heupel. Actually, I don't think they have cords anymore. <laughs> it's all wireless. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, it doesn't sound like you have my back, just to be clear there. Uh, for the record, I could be had on Vol Club Confidential at a very reasonable price. So there, there wouldn't have to be too much negotiation if, if we want to start up a conversation. Would you take Jordan or LeBron? Oh, man. Yeah, have you seen the gap is closing among current players? Oh, man. It's like 45, Again, they're 42. All they're, they're, all, sure. they're all prisoners because they played with him, right? You know. Yeah, the, the, for the record, I would... I would take Jordan. I th- I do think the the gap is closer than many want it to be, but I would take Jordan. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, again, longevity. There are certain boxes that LeBron will check that Jordan does not. Sure, you know, sure. There are certain there are certain ones that Jordan checks that LeBron will never check. Also, when you have these conversations with recruits, just make sure you say LeBron, okay? Say whatever the recruits or Paul George apparently. Oh yeah, Paul George. That's that's that's, that's their goat. Yep. You know, yep. Yeah. For many of them, Austin Price, VolQuest dot com. Uh, are all the box checked for Tennessee's roster for twenty twenty four? Yeah, I don't. I, I, as of we're sitting here on the twenty fourth of April, I do not see Tennessee adding anybody from the transfer portal. Do I? Could I see a, a you know someone else leave the program? Yeah, potentially. Could, but uh, I, I don't see anybody else coming in. Um, they, they they like where they're at with all with all their spots. Uh, they did not feel the need to go just add a body at, at running back. You know, the biggest question is kind of just how's the basketball roster going to fill out? Because I think the the, the the football one's pretty you know lockstep. So that's a no for Iowa quarterback Deacon Hill. No. Not even going to entertain it. Uh, what, <laughs> any insight into what you expect maybe over the next couple of days or where things stand with the number of basketball transfers that Tennessee has brought in or will bring in for a visit? Yeah, I mean, Igor Milicic, I think, you know, the, the rubber's going to meet the road for him probably by the end of the week. I think Tennessee continues to be in a really good spot there. Um, Felix Akpara, the transfer from Ohio State, who's currently still on campus on his official visit, um, you know, I believe Tennessee will land him. I think that they're in an excellent spot there. Um, some ties to the Chattanooga area with family and stuff. That one just seems like that one's destined to make sense. And then after that, uh, Kate Tyson, you know, Tennessee's still in it. He's not committed, even though, you know, everybody had him pegged for North Carolina. And I think that's probably right in the end. But, like, you know, for whatever reason, he's still hanging out there uncommitted to anybody. Um, and it feels like he's done with his visits. It doesn't feel like he's going to take any more. And then uh, – We'll see who else goes in the portal between now and, and May 1st because I think you know, there's some ne- rumored names out there, and if they end up going in, then I think Tennessee would likely pursue those names um, you know, if, if kids go in. But, you know, again, there's a lot of rumors that never, you know, never happened. And there are some kids that, like Jason Jenkins, who you know, kind of intended to do it, then you know, really thought about it and decided not to, right? So, I mean, like you kind of got to let them go in the portal before you kind of wrap your mind around that, you know, that kid actually is going to be on the move. What's the forecast for, uh, for for May in terms of commitments, pledges? I know that uh, you took the under at one and a half, but, hey, man, we were pleasantly surprised with two. What about the forecast for May? I thought the under uh, – was it under was – it, was it one and a half? I thought it was two and a half. It was, I thought it was one and a half. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was one and a half, but Radarius Jackson was a surprise oh, commit, okay. right? Yeah. I like surprises. Um, yeah. yeah. It, was, um, it was good. Okay, good. Uh, I couldn't remember what it was. We have so many overrunners on VolQuest. And <laughs> you know, um, I, maybe it was two and a half on VolQuest, and I said under um, there. Uh, you know, th- I think May will be relatively slow. Could they add one or two? Yeah, but I mean, I think you're looking at June and July continuing to be the boom months for recruiting just across the board. You know, I mean, once you get to this point, unless you kind of already know and have it in your mind, you know, hey, I'm committing this date. Um, like Jalen Matthews is going to commit June 3rd. I mean, not really, he, he, there's not really any visits he can take between now and then. Maybe at the end of May, 
they're going to sway kind of his thought process, right? Um, but once you get to this point, it's like, okay, I'm going to take my official visits, you know, especially if you already have them set. So like David Sanders just took his official visit to South Carolina. He's going to take his other four official, four or five official visits in June and then uh, probably work towards the decision in July. And I think that's where you'll see a lot of those guys. He ain't going on down South Carolina, Austin. <laughs> we, we know he ain't going to South Carolina. Oh, no, I know, but what I'm just saying, he, I was just stating that he just took an official there last week. Yeah, I know. He'll take I the know. other officials in, in June. Yeah, take advantage of the free crawfish. and well, Let Austin do his job. We, I, have, we have him on the show to do that. I understand that, but I mean, he ain't going to South Carolina. Don't even get, the, don't even get their agree. hopes up. Yeah, don't even get the hopes <laughs> up, Dave. You know you're going to come to the, to the real school, Tennessee. Hey, I, Austin, I actually think it's more fun when, they, when the fans at those schools actually do get their hopes up. Oh sure, it's great. It's great for the online fodder, right? Yeah, no doubt. All the trash talk between fan bases. Hey, uh, one more on-field question before you go, Austin. Uh, speaking of the running back position, Tennessee right now looks like they're set at what that position will be personnel-wise. What do you think Deshaun Bishop showed the coaches this spring to maybe help them feel like they're okay with that position group? Uh, he, he looked more like the guy that had made plays last year before he got injured. Um, you know, it's kind of, I think, started a little slow this spring. But then once he found his footing, showed, uh, you know, the ability to make plays. He's shifty. He's quick. Um, can can make plays in, in tight spaces. And showed enough to where I think the staff feels comfortable with him. We have this question in the Walkwest podcast that will come out tomorrow. And I think it's a fascinating question. And I'll ask it to you guys as we head out the door. If you could wrap only one player in bubble wrap, during fall camp to make sure they were for sure healthy for game one. Is it Dylan Sampson with the thin nature at the tailback spot, or is it Cooper Mays? Mays. That's what I was thinking before you even gave us the options. Cooper is who I was thinking immediately. Those would probably be the first two that would come to mind. Uh, Nico's off the board there, right? Like, obviously, he's taken care of. But, yeah, it'd be Cooper. I saw the start of last season without him, and – I wouldn't, if I'm Josh Heupel, not be interested in seeing that again. But Dylan, you know, <laughs> if, you if you take Dylan off the field, I, I have big questions about the running back group too, so it's a, it's a good question. You can take Dylan off the field for the first game or two and throw the ball 50 times and still win. That's, true. That's where maybe I get my reps against the mocks on August 31st. So with all due respect, right, Josh? With all due respect uh-huh. to Chattanooga. <laughs> hey, uh, Austin, let Josh Heupel know I'm ready to schedule whatever weekend for my official visit and we can discuss – bag and all that stuff after the fact uh, what can people find at volquest.com right now what bag oh man we, we got all kinds of basketball uh, portal talk we've got uh, obviously recruiting coverage uh, eric kane's got you covered with all the baseball tennessee uh, looking for uh, to to for a little bit of revenge after last year's sweep of of tennessee by missouri uh in columbia missouri last year in that cold early season matchup um, in SEC play, Tennessee gets them in what should be a nice, balmy Lindsey Nelson coming up this weekend. A uh, real chance for Tennessee to to continue to move up the you know the standings in, in baseball and get another series win. And uh, we'll just continue to talk all things Vols, uh, all at VolQuest.com. Hey, AP, you think that Tony Vitello, after the series, is going to run up to the uh, Missouri coach and say, stand on business, coach, and they run off? Uh, no, uh, no. <laughs> Tony does not do juvenile things such as that, um, you know, and neither does Josh Heibel. Neither does Josh Heibel. Now, both of them might be spiteful in some form or fashion playing their alma mater, Missouri and Oklahoma, but they're not going to do the uh, the childish antics, you know, feeling, feeling, feeling the pressure to do it just because you had told your team you would do it. <laughs> I can see Tony doing it. Quite a scene. Still on business. Quite a scene. Austin having to deal with our childish antics here on the show. We appreciate that. As always, Austin, thanks so much, and we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds good, guys. Appreciate you.